Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second keynote speech. Today, very proud to present our keynote speech for uh, the very hot topic recent year that is related to quantum cryptography. Before introduction to our keynote speaker today, I would like to give a brief about the collaboration between ECT Association with the University of Science and Technology of China, or UHTC. A return to the year 2011, that the first time UHTC gave us a, a very special section in ISPAC conference at Chiang Mai, that the first time. The year 2013, ECT Association visited World Class Laboratory Quantum Cryptography in, in China, quite big, a lot of equipment, and we, we know that that's about 10 years, UHTC now the number one in terms of research and development in quantum cryptography area. And again, last year, ECTI conference, ECTI con 2016, the director of the company from UHTC gave out a workshop at Chiang Mai last year. So today is the fourth time that we we hope for our colleague from USTC. For our keynote speaker, he graduated the PhD from uh, the same university, USTC, in the year 2008. And now he is an um, associate professor in the Department of Optics and Optical Engineering School of Physical Science. And he working on a quantum key distribution to make much effort to promote quantum cryptography in real life uh, or, or practical uh, communication network. And up to now, uh, his uh, research group already linked uh, quantum uh, cryptography network more than 50 nodes and more than five, uh, 400 kilometers in, in, in China uh, between two, two main cities. Ladies and gentlemen, good welcome to the topic of applying quantum key distribution technology in real life network and welcome to our keynote speaker, Dr. Wei Chen. Thanks to the Professor Petersai and thanks for the uh, conference committee and the president of the committee of the conference. Uh, I am Wichen from the University of Science and Technology of China. Uh, my topic is uh, focused on the real-life QPD evolution in China. Uh, since I, I have noticed most of the audience are uh, electronic engineering, engineering now in the research field of uh, quantum research, so I will uh, show all of the equations push it away and to introduce some concept and uh, most improvement in China. So here is my outline. Uh, firstly, uh, please allow me to uh, briefly introduce the concept of quantum communication or quantum key distribution. Uh, the six parts are divided, and then I will introduce how to implement the whole QTD from concept to the real life equipment and the real life network. And then I will introduce some uh, maybe two major projects in China. One is the uh, 2000, 2000 link, 2000 kilometers link from Beijing to Shanghai, we call it quantum backbone network, and the second is the quantum satellite. And finally, I will introduce some the QPD commercialization in China and some prospect. The first part, uh, I will try to introduce the concept of quantum key distribution in five minutes, and try to explain what is quantum. Uh, for now, we have been having one in the tools of quantum technologies, such as the laser, the electronic chips, and in recent years, quantum technology has a new branch, uh, such as the uh, quantum computing, quantum communication, which combines the quantum mechanics with the information technologies. And for now, quantum chip aiming at to who perform quantum information or quantum computing is, the, is a very important event branch. Uh, from in the recent 10 years, 
from one critical qubit implemented in 2004 and into, into, until this year, we have about 16 and 10 physical qubit implemented in USTC and in IBM. And for future, we believe that some of qubits can be implemented maybe in 15 years, in the next 15 years. So incredible computing abilities will be proposed to human beings in the next few future. Quantum technologies brings new challenges and opportunities to information security. We all know that information security is very important to our internet life. And quantum computing can change in principle computing capabilities and quantum algorithms such as the Shor algorithm and Google Out algorithm will bring threat threatened to existing cyber systems, for example, RSA and AES. But when one door closed, is closed, uh, another window will be open. So quantum mechanics combined with the information technology also bring us some new branches to provide our information security, such as the quantum environment, the relationship of the quantum particles that we can develop, quantum cryptography, which in which the quantum key distribution is the most common use as mentioned. In real life, when Alice wants to send Bob some information, and he don't, he, and she do not like E to get the cipher, to get the plain text, he will encrypt the plain text into a cipher and transfer the cipher into the public channel, which is not safe, which is not secure. The public key or semi chip key are the measures we use to protect the information security nowadays. But the public key and private key, most of the algorithms are computational security. In this algorithm, there is one information, theoretical security, means one time pad can perform that we can get everlasting information security, even our keys is, in, is, the, uh, is broken by the E. That we also call this unconditional security or absolute security in some uses. But unconditional security is not unconditional at war. It has some conditions. One is the random number we use to perform the cipher. We must use the true random number and only use it once. And the random number should be equal with the plain text and perform XOR operations piece by piece. That is uh, demonstrated by Shannon, one of the pioneers in information, security, information technology. The so advantage is security is independent with the dropper's computing and storage ability, but there's a disadvantage or the question how to securely distribute keys between the patch users. Uh, then QKD, we mean the quantum key distribution, can perform the secure key distribution or more accurately key consolidation between different users through an unsecure public channels. Then combined with one-time high encryption, we can get ITS communication. So uh, it is worth to mention quantum communication and quantum key distrib distribution. What is the rela relationship and difference between it? Because we also see the news that the quantum communication network and quantum communication development, in fact, QKD can be regarded as one of the branches in quantum communication. This is Professor Nick Martin, one of the pioneers of quantum information. He has written the, one of the reviewers in the uh, robotics in quantum communication. They have divided, they have divided the quantum uh, communication into two parts. One is quantum key distribution, and the other is quantum penetration. So we have now know the functionality of the QKD. The problem is, problem is how to develop the QKD from concept to real life equipment. We have a lot of QKD protocols. Protocols perform the information encoding and decoding from the uh, classical information to the information carry of quantum particles. For now, BB84 protocol is the most widely used and the most secure protocol in real life. So I will focus on BB84 
and use the polarization of photons to explain the principle of big of photocopy. Well, now the polarization of photons is the vibration direction of the electronic fields of a photon. So we can have a horizon polarization, vertical polarization, and we have some angle, for example, 45 degree, and white angle is 35 degree polarization here. So then we can divide the degree into two sides. In each side, the two states, we call it quantum states, when we use a single photon as the information carrier. Then we use it, this side as a Z basis, Z basis, and this side is the X basis. We can divide into two bases, and the states in each basis is orthogonal. Then what, what can we perform if Alice use a single photon to randomly modulate his polarization into one of the four states? For example, he used a word horizontal polarization and then sent it to Bob through a public channel. And Bob, well, what should, should he do? He would select from the two bases, Z bases and X bases, randomly select the two, one of the two bases to perform the measurement. Okay, so if Alice sends a horizontal polarization, a polarization to Bob and Bob use the bases, that is the same basis with Alice. He will not disturb the quantum states, and he should get 100% accurate measurement result. If we use the polarization and the vertical as the classical key piece, for example, 0 for horizontal and 1 for vertical, and also for x spaces, then from this part we can see that Alice and Bob can get agreement, I mean the identity classical keys between the two users. So if Bob selects a mismatch basis, I mean the X basis to perform the, to perform the measurement, then he will get 5%, 50%, uh, 50% 0 and 50% as 1. That will be different with Alice. So if we perform to reserve the basis the measurement result with the same basis and discuss the measurement result with the mismatched basis, we can get the identity keys between Alice and Bob in principle. That is the basic foundation of the concept. So if Alice prepares the photons one by one and modulate it randomly into one of the four states and send them to Bob one by one, they can get some sequence. And after comparing with their basis, that means uh, that can be called safe in quantum key distribution. After sifting, they will get some uh, identity identical keys between them. That is the BB84 protocol, uh, protocol proposed by Bernard Versace in 1948. In 19, 1984, sorry. So what if uh, there is a huge dropper in the channel? When we intercept the photons, he has a hot chance to get the same basis as Bob and the wrong basis by 50%. So when he get uh, right, uh, the right basis, he will not introduce the quantum bit array to Bob. That his use dropping action cannot be found. But he has half, half he has 50% to induce the wrong basis. Then he will introduce about 25 quantum bit arrays to the whole system with at least four comparing their detection result. That is, cannot be reduced and the E must be, must be detected when he performs the use dropping actions. So, so this security of the system is performed by the, is, is uh, guaranteed by the quantum mechanics. So Heisenberg and Sintin principles uh, to make the measurement information of a quantum particle will introduce a, and will introduce a detectable disturbance. And when we use only single photon, and the non-cloning theory provides that you cannot get or copy the same information carrier as Alice has prepared. That is the security foundation of the quantum key distribution by quantum mechanics. So here is the QKD system we performed, I have drawn as the classical, com uh, classical communication system, as a source modulation 
source modulation, demodulation, and the detection when the signals are transferred from the quantum channel. In, in our implementation in practical QD systems, the source will be photon source and uh, uh, modulator and demodulator are performed by optical devices. And the fiber out of free space will be the quantum channel for transferring particles from Alice to Paul. Uh, it is worth to be mentioned that only quantum procedure cannot guarantee the whole system, whole security of the system. Classical cryptology must be introduced to guarantee the system. For example, the classical channel is necessary to perform some uh, uh, some communication between Alice and Bob, and the, the classical channel must be authenticated. That is, depend on the classical cryptology. So beside, so beyond the uh, uh, quantum procedure, we have also some pre-processing and uh, post-processing with class complications. Pre-processing identity I, uh, will give the identity authentication of the legitimate users, and the post-processing with class communications will perform the sifting, the error correction, the privacy amplification, and some others procedures. So we must know that. Classical cryptology is necessary to guarantee the security of quantum communications. Okay, here is the whole procedure. We can divide the uh, procedure of the protocol into the quantum procedure or the classical procedure. We all know, should know that the keys between Alice and Bob will shrink step by step when perform the whole uh, protocol. So after. So finally, we generate the secure keys after the privacy amplification and some estimation. Only 0.1% to 1% of the final keys will be reserved, which is the secure, in unconditional secure, I mean, guaranteed by the quantum mechanics. So for example, we use one gigahertz working frequency systems. How much qubit, how much secure keys will you get is about seven. Seven, uh, seven tenths of kilometers to one microbit per second. That is the perfect. Uh, I have uh, introduced the polarization coding. Actually, phase encoding is one of the most employed QKD schemes in fiber channel, especially that use the interferometers. If we have some uh, uh, some some fiber sensing and fiber fiber communication, we can know that this is a AMT interferometer. Like some Mark Sander interferometer. We also can modulate the phase of the photons into the four states, the so zero pi, half pi, and the one and half pi. That is, uh, uh, that is uh, the same as the polarization as the polarization vertical and others. So we can also use the phase coding stable to perform BB8 work purpose. Also, some frequency of the photons and others, other physical elements can also be used to perform this work. So it's uh, flexible. This is the evolution of QPD system from the first experiment in 1989 that is performed by also a net. And here is some uh, BBN system in 2004. A lot of equipment, only one set of system. Here is our system of USTC in 2014. Each box is one of the system. We can see. That we have developed two sets of systems. One is a split time, which means a QKD transmitter and the QKD receivers are separated, separated in the different location. And another one is the only one type QKD equipment. That we have the transmitter and the reservoir include the photon source, the single photon detectors together in only one box like this. Only one that performs the BB8 box protocol. And we use the Faraday microcentrophorometer, which is a microcentrophorometer using the Faraday rotating mirror to provide self calibration of the fiber fluctuation of the polarization that is caused by the fiber bed infringements. It can be self compensated. So the channel disturbance, the channel fluctuation of the polarization is no matter the problem. And we can all combine this in a 3.5 right mount cases, and the working frequency of the system is more than 20 megahertz. That is our previous, previously uh, quantum gate distribution terminal. 
And here we have a new terminal which is working beyond one gigahertz. That we saw the practical security problem that a lot of issues because the practical system has some gaps in these uh, theoretical protocols. And then we use the also IPM interferometer to get a robustness and a stableness. And we get one gigahertz working frequency to get high performance, and we all combine this optical module, electronic module, and into a APCA cases. Here is our here here is our uh, software control software and the whole system and some F FPGA uh, processing engine. Here is the long term lasting testament about the quantum bit error rate, which can be used to evaluate the stability of the system. We can see that the average cube is about 2.4%, uh, uh, and uh, the fluctuation is not very much. That is shown that the uh, system is much stable during uh, 34 days testing. Interestingly, we also use the skiing in the uh, air area fiber leak, not in the ground. Area fiber link will suffer from wall fluctuations from cloud and other things. In the ultra high voltage direct current test yard of China in the smart grid network, that is the Stokes parameter expiring with time, which can evaluate the polarization variations of the channels. So you can see it's, uh, it's very, uh, it's very, very much with the time. And here we use the power spectral density of the Stokes parameters to evaluate. We can notice that in the 50 hertz, 100 hertz, and 150 hertz, we have three peaks, three little peaks. That is caused by the power frequency in China is 15 hertz, and can generate some, uh, uh, some little peaks to the polarization states of the photons by uh, transmitting through the fiber link together with the uh, direct current test, direct current fiber. And here is our cuber to evaluate the stability of the system. We can see it is very stable now. Another problem is uh, when we want to build a QPD network, the system must be matching. Be matching between the mass interferometers. And we saw this problem, the interferometer's accuracy can be get 10 ppm. And uh, we use a rack mount and type we test a lot of equipment that is get uh, arbitrary arbitrary matching between the uh, between four set of interferometers. We get cuber. It is very low in QKD experiment. Uh, of course, comparing with the classical te uh, telecommunication, it is very high, but uh, it's not the same concept. Okay. So. Uh, in order to use QPD in real life, we must extend it from point to point to scalable, scalable network, test it in the field, and then optimize the system and network, network topology. That is the necessity of the evolution of QPD network. We use P2P to network and to test it in the field. But the photons, the quantum particles transfer in the network is uh, very different with the traditional optical light signals in the optical network because the coherent maintenance is necessary and in QVD, some special security requirements is also necessary. Uh, it also needs to be scalable, which means with the performance of the network will not drop to exponentially while the users added into the network and it must be achievable with a, a acceptable cost. Since the photon cannot be amplified or relayed with regular, regular method due to the security requirements of QPD cell, it is difficult to be ruled or, or, or otherwise using single photons. And also, the quantum signals at the power of the transmitter is limited so that a stringent SNR condition is necessary. So we have uh, in some uh, routing method. The first one is a uh, trusted relay. The second one is use optical optical devices to perform the photon run, photon routing. And the third, the third is the entanglement network. 
This one is still far from now, and this one we use the classical assistance to perform the photon to electronic signals and the electronic signals to photon, not more. So this one can perform the security of the optical photons and can be used to perform the metropolitan network. Here is a schematic of the wired area to be network. We have some metropolitan networks. And if the inter intercity QTE link is beyond 200 kilometers, and we can direct link the direct link directly link the two metropolitan networks together. But if it's too long, for example, 300 400 kilometers away, we must use the repeater or trusted relays to perform the distance extension. extension. Uh, we have proposed the stack-type routing method using wavelength division, multiplexing, and some other other things. Uh, that is a passive routing method taking the quantum property of the photons, and we can see a lot of wavelength resources. Only two WPMs, wavelength division modules, are in the middle of the arbitrary two users, even in expanded QD networks that will guarantee the the scalability of the network. Also, we also noticed that the wavelength is, in, is very delicious, in a very delicious resource, as most the P2P QKD system are unidirectional. So, the direction of the photon transmission can be used to route the photon itself. Then the, then the number of the wavelengths we need are divided into half as more. That is another routing method of the photons. We use the master and some others. We build some uh, QKD, or we also call quantum communication networks. That is the networks uh, established between 2010 in the world by DAPA, by SCQC, by Tokyo. These two ones are by us, and these ones by uh, Dr. Tan's group, and some of those. In recent three years, we build some other networks with a uh, larger scale. Uh, one is a 49 nodes, metropolitan QT networks in Hefei. 49 and one is 56 nodes, metropolitan QT networks in Nan. These two networks, the major use is bank and some other institutes. And we also have a wide area networks from Hefei to Wuhu. It's a wide area QT network. Uh, it combines two metropolitan networks in Hefei and the wide network in Wuhu. And the intercity link is more than 200, more than 200 kilometers. This is the topology of the whole network. This is the Hefei network and the Wuhu network. In Hefei network, uh, we combine the optic switches and the wavelength routing method together to get uh, a full time and full connectivity uh, network that can be changed on demand. And in Wuhu, we uh, established a uh, optical access network using the using the optic switches, and we com combine the the two networks together using the trusted release in Shaohu. Shaohu now is divided into three parts. And here we tested the network more than fifty during more than uh, five thousand hours. This is the right the data record. The cube, the secure cube read. C has a very, uh, C has a deep. The deep is due to the accident. When the city building the road, the fiber was cut off, so there is a deep here. Here are some equipment placed in the, in the uh, telecom home during the testament. It is to be mentioned that one of the nodes, one of the nodes in the, in the makeshift kitchen, because the node uh, it's, uh, in, uh, it's in a lab formally, but uh, now the lab has moved, so it's uh, uh, being a uh, makeshift kitchen. The gas, the exhaust fine, and other things are interference to our system. However, the system can still work well in this harsh environment, which also been pointed out by the new scientist when he reported on work. 
So QPD must combine with practical communication services in order to provide services. There are two major lenses to uh, applicate QPD in that world. Low bandwidth communication traffic, such as the voice, the fax, or PSTV network. Uh, one time pipe is supported with the QPD terminal itself. And for high bandwidth communication, QPD as the key secure communication equipment will be more effective. The method can increase the update rate of the session's key automatically, which will improve the security of the communication traffic of the combined with the classical, classical encryption devices. Okay, here I will introduce some uh, recent progress of USTC's QPD research. In USTC, we have a quantum GDP. We all know GDP is the gross domestic product which is used to evaluate the economic growth of a country or a state or something. But we have a quantum GDP in USTC with three persons, three academics of Chinese, Chinese academic of our science. One is Huang Sanguo. This is the director of our lab. And the other is Jiang Fengdu. And the third is Jian Mei Pan, is a very famous person. So GDP, that is the in USDC. Uh, in quantum communication, Huang Changhuo and JV Pan has, has performed a lot of works, and Jiang Fengdu is used in quantum is working in the quantum metrology, quantum measurement field. We all know some uh, two major projects. One is the uh, quantum link between Beijing to Shanghai, the quantum satellite. I will briefly introduce. The quantum link from Beijing to Shanghai is based on the trusted relay because it's more than 2,000 kilometers longer. It cannot be directly connected. So it used a trustable relay setting up the quantum backbone, the quantum backbone in China from Beijing to Shanghai. Here is the link from Beijing to Jinan, to Lofi, and to Nanjing, and to Shanghai. The total length is uh, about uh, 2,100 kilometers. It built from uh, 2013 to 2016. It's more than uh, three and a half years. And it used 32 trustable reading nodes, and uh, it divided into 31 hyperlinks. It has some uh, metropolitan networks in Beijing, in Jinan, in Hefei, and in Shanghai. USTC is the initiator of the project. The total investment Someone will uh, focus on the investment. The total investment is uh, 0 0.56 billion Chinese yuan. Chinese yuan is about uh, uh, 80 million US dollars, perhaps. And the customers, uh, the most, uh, the customers is a bank and some uh, institute related with the bank is the major customers. For example, China, uh, Chinese. Chinese Industry and Commercial Development Bank and the Minshan Bank. And they used the QPD to perform the data storage and the data backup systems to support the security from, uh, from one data center to another data center when trying data. Another one is a Chinese uh, quantum experiment at space scale, that means quantum satellite has been uh, reported by science. The quantum satellite is named as the Mercurius quantum satellite. Why Mercurius or Mozi? Mozi is uh, one of the ancient Chinese philosophers who has proposed the pain of imaging more than 2,000 years ago. So it's a, it's a very famous inventor in China. This is the project invest, uh, this is the project leader, Jian Mei Pan. And here we have the photons. We have a picture of the whole satellite. The satellite uh, launched last year, uh, August last year, in Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The weight of the satellite is about 640 kilograms and uh, designed. Uh, Life of the satellite is about two years. The orbit is from 500 kilometers to 2,000 kilometers because it's a latitude orbit. 
the foundation of the project is uh, more than 100 million dollars at the space scale program. Here is a picture of the model. It's not a real one, it's a model, but uh, almost the same size as the uh, as real satellite. It can be depart, uh, divided into four parts. One is the quantum communication equipment. In fact, it is the quantum key distribution. I have just mentioned quantum communication, quantum key distribution is also be the same uh, mentioned by the reports. And the other one is the quantum entanglement source here and the quantum entanglement transmitter. This is source and used in transmitter to send the photons to the station grounds. And we have also the control and the processing systems. The bright of the entanglement source is more than one microphone. That means one more than one microphone's calls can be performed using this entanglement source. And the line width less than three nanometers, the polarization extinction ratio the extinction ratio is more than two hand, uh, more than 20 bits. In the transmitter of the entanglement, the pitch angle in the transmitter of the entanglement. The pitch angle is more than 10 degrees, that is the range. It can be regarded as the tracking range, and the tracking angle is better than minor than the particular five microradians. The working frequency of this QBD transmitter is about 30 microhertz and it can be get a polarization extinction ratio better than 100 to 1. And apertures of the telescope is about 200 millimeters. That is the four part of the satellite. The satellite is aiming at perform four kind of scientific experiment. One is high speed quantum communications between the satellite and the ground. The other one is to build a wide area quantum communication network based on the QKD experiment itself. And the other kind of experiment is one is entanglement distribution between satellite and ground stations. And based on the entanglement distribution, they can perform teleportation. One of the other kind of quantum communication procedure between satellite and uh, ground state. Here are some pictures when they uh, assemble the satellite and uh, when they tracking the satellite. This is the satellites are assembled to the to the rocket. And here, when the satellite is on the orbit, they tracking the state of the satellite, and this is the tracking system. Here is the team. It's the team to perform the satellite launching. We can see the people dressing with the blue and the white clothes are all the team, are all the, are all the members of the team. Uh, I have count it, it is more than 50%. I think. It's really a lot of person. And here are some uh, some pictures when the when the satellite across the sky. Green light is for APT of the satellite. And uh, some one of the researchers said the quantum satellite has cured has spawned data spawned analysis since he need to look up frequently. Now, the satellite has uh, finished one of its uh, four purposes, that is the entanglement distribution over uh, 1,200 kilometers. Between the receiver station in uh, Qinghai province, the Linha station, and uh, Lijiang province in Yun, uh, Lijiang station in Yunnan province, in Yunnan province. The physical distance between the Linha and Yunnan is uh, more than 12. 100 kilometers. For the mission of the entanglement distribution, three ground stations are cooperated with the satellite. You can locate it in Dolingha in Qinghai, and uh, Nanshan in Ulmuchi, and uh, Xinjiang, uh, Xinjiang province, and uh, Gomeigu in Nanshan, Yunnan, in, uh, in Lijiang, Yunnan province. 
So the physical distance is uh, more than 1,200 kilometers, and the uh, distance between the ground station to the satellite is varies from 500 kilometers to 20,000 kilometers, uh, varying due to the orbit itself. The effective laboratory space is just greatly increased and provides a new platform for quantum networks as well as for probing the validity of the quantum mechanics itself. This is the satellite-based entanglement distribution over one uh, over 1,200 kilometers. They use the uh, Sagnac satellite structure to uh, generate uh, uh, entanglement photons and uh, AEB system and uh, tracking accuracy. And this is the distance between the satellite and the ground states. We can see varying from 500 to about more than one and uh, more than 1600 kilometers. And here are some times with the, with the rotation time. This is the attenuation when the uh, when, when the distance of the, between the satellite and the station is changed, the attenuation is changing also. Uh, one orbit passing through the station is about five minutes, and five minutes, so that is it. The next step is to use a quantum satellite to build a globe secure network, for example, from Shanghai to Beijing to Wunmuqi, and to use a satellite can build a wide area network. And here are some uh, QKD commercialization in China. I will try to finish in three minutes. And uh, the industrial chain of communication combines the devices, producer, uh, per, uh, production companies, and the uh, kernel, I mean the quantum key distribution terminal uh, equipment itself, and downstream. There are two uh, major companies. One is QSKY. They also build the complete QBD terminals, change the router, and some other single quantum detectors and other things. The other one is quantum C-type. They also have some uh, QBD extension controllers and the QBD terminals. A lot of companies have involved in the quantum way, such as Huawei, Zhongxin, and ZTE, and also uh, China Mobile and other companies. And some quantum communication links our networks are building in China. Here is a uh, here is a quantum communication market estimation from the Research and Development Department of China Securities, and uh, they aim at uh, 2020. More than 1,000 Chinese yuan market will be closed. That is not by my my point of view. This is by the stock companies. Okay. So the road to the real-life QPD, uh, we need some steps. Now we are on the road. A lot of uh, progress has been made, but we still need a lot of things to, to be catch up. Here is a reduction from the partner. Uh, we can see that quantum computing has emerged here. That means it has a right, right way to the top. But uh, quantum, quantum communication, they did not uh, disrupt it. So we can forecasting of uh, QPD in the next five years. Uh, between the satellite and ground station will be for full fulfilled in the next few years, I think. Next one year, I think. And the integrated quantum communication chips and the handheld devices may also be, be, be occurred during the next three to five years uh, commercially. And ultra long distance with the quantum relay and the quantum memory. Maybe longer, ultra high speed QKD devices with uh, 10 gigahertz operating uh, frequency will also be emerged. And global, and uh, QKD standard in China and global will also be emerged. Okay, thanks for your attention and uh, come and welcome. This is our, our group and uh, feedback. Thank you. That's a wonderful talk. Very, really nice presentation from the classical information technology up to quantum information technology and also up to satellite. Hello. Uh, I, I have two related questions. Okay. Mm, the, the first one. Um, the first one, <coughs> what, what do you think? Um, 
uh, in presence uh, the public key uh, standard like AES uh, or ETC in the presence of quantum computer uh, is it still secure or uh, how, how long does it take for quantum computer to uh, to hack this, this kind of uh, encryption and, and, and the second question is um, you, you mentioned that uh, with uh, QKD, we still need um, traditional authentication. But uh, what about in terms of secrecy? Do we still need um, some traditional, for example, public key? Or, or do you think the uh, one time pad in, uh, will completely destroy this kind of uh, encryption? Uh, in terms of secrecy. Okay, so thank you. I think I understand your question. First one is uh, what uh, threaten to the traditional uh, uh, traditional encryption measure uh, when the quantum computer has uh, emerged. The second is uh, uh, the second is the traditional uh, encryption scheme is also necessary in QPD sessions. So, uh, what is my comment to that? Is that the second. Uh, I can answer your question in the, the first question. Okay. Uh, I have actually I have prepared a slide, but uh, not included in the in the in the uh, due to the time limited limitation. Uh, in information security era, actually the AES or three DAS algorithms used today is not will not be safe anymore. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the American, I think, uh, East has a uh, promote up or up, up upgrade the uh, security infrastructure uh, in this year, and in some quantum era, uh, there are two major branches to provide the security in the quantum era. One is the post quantum cryptography, and the other is the QPD. Uh, some uh, some researchers uh, on the traditional or classical Cryptology, uh, they are researching in this field. And uh, the physical and some the engineering are researching in this field. Uh, there are some differences. I can explain a little. Uh, the security engine is not, is not uh, the same. Since the post quantum cryptography, they have used the complex set, complex, uh, complexity based classical algorithm. They moved from the existing algorithm. And the QPD is a, a total new one. But, uh, the security level is not the same because the post quantum cryptography they can resist to existing quantum algorithm, but maybe vulnerable to future ones. And QED can get IT as security, it is probable. And uh, the cost, of course, QED costs much, a lot of money to provide the security. And uh, uh, the advantages of the post quantum cryptography. Is that they do not need much change to the ex existing infrastructures, but the QVD changed a lot. But uh, we have uh, also, uh, it is worth to be mentioned that uh, we have uh, need some, if we need some everlasting security, that is the post security. The post quantum cryptography cannot guarantee that the QVD can continue to the key as it the formal information has transferred still very much security. Using QPD, but use post quantum, we may be vulnerable to future ones. That is the uh, first question I can answer you. The question uh, two, I think, is uh, uh, if we need the uh, initial Asia keys to use the uh, as authentication, uh, that is a problem. A lot of uh, QPD researchers are from the physical uh, research field, so they do not care about it. But I, I know that problem. When we build a uh, network with not a very large scale capability, we can set one initial keys in each equipment when we are protected the equipment. But when we build a very large network, for example, more than 1,000 nodes, we use some uh, traditional, for example, uh, uh, CA authentication to perform the authentication. That is also a problem, but, but that is only used at the initiation procedure of the QPD. When the new key has been generated, we use the uh, generated keys to perform the 
authentication and some uh, classical uh, 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 complications. We do not use the original keys anymore, so the security dropped very slowly. That is the uh, second question I have. Seen. I don't know if I have answered your question. Thank you. For the other applicant, Dr. Bhattar. I'm more interested in, in practical aspect. <laughs> so I, I would like to know, in uh, short term, maybe one to five years, what will be the maximum speed of the equipment for QKD? Uh, you mean the, in the next few uh, five, five years? Yeah. I think uh, 2.5 gigahertz is on the road, but I think 10 gigahertz uh, practical QKD equipment will be emerged in the next three to five years. Uh, in fact, we are just uh, we are just uh, developing on, on this kind of equipment. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, and I would like to invite um, our former president, Professor Prabhat Jongbati Gautana from Jura University, to present a gift for our speaker. Thank you very much, and uh, I am on behalf of uh, UTI Telecommunication and ITPN Communication Society Thailand Sector. Would like to thank everyone joining us and see you again next time. Thank you.